Hey everybody, it's Chris for All Ears TV and All Ears Net. Today, we are in Magic Kingdom, and we're gonna get in a boat and soak up one of the greatest Disney earworms ever. We've got some tips and trivia, some stuff you may not know about a ride whose main song you know all too well. So climb aboard as we set sail in that very smallest of worlds. Uh, please tell me you know I'm talking about It's a Small World. Walt Disney originally designed this attraction for the Pepsi-Cola company to benefit UNICEF at the 1964-65 New York World's Fair. When the fair closed, the attraction made its way to Disneyland and was so popular that it was installed as one of the original Fantasyland attractions when Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom opened in 1971. It's a Small World is a Fast Pass Plus attraction, however, Fast Pass Plus is only needed during really crowded times. If you do encounter a long line, just try back later in the day as lines usually get a lot shorter. A few of the boats have wheelchair access. Ask the cast member at the attraction. Guests using an ECV must transfer to a wheelchair to ride. Audio description and handheld captioning are available as well. There are a lot of wishes made from people tossing coins into water rides, wells, fountains, etc. It's good to know that when Disney cleans out all of these coins, they donate them to Central Florida nonprofit organizations. So not only do you get your wish, but so do others. This is a continuous loading ride. That is, as soon as one boatload of visitors disembarks, another is then loaded on. Each boat can hold up to 20 people. The small boats glide along the international waters and you are very quickly surrounded by dancing dolls, animals, and flowers, singing one of the most infectious earworms of all time. During your 10 minute ride, your boat serenely glides along a 1,085 foot canal where you are entertained by 289 audio animatronic doll figures, 147 toys, and 36 animated props. Each room you pass through has a theme with the audio animatronics outfitted in clothing and with props that reflect their respective cultures and with singing in their languages with musical instruments from those countries. The major themes include Europe, Asia, Africa, Central and South America, the South Pacific Islands, plus a bright finale scene and a goodbye scene. Walt had been active in organizations like People to People. This program, started by President Dwight Eisenhower in 1956, focused on easing conflict by having common people from other countries visit each other to eliminate the misunderstandings, misperceptions, and suspicions born from the fear of the unknown. It was personally important to Walt to create an attraction that would emphasize international understanding. Many times, Walt had proposed international experiences for Disneyland, but a variety of reasons prevented them from being realized, including the infamous International Street that would have run parallel to Main Street USA. For the attraction, Walt focused on the children of the world as hosts to this simplistic yet charming, whimsical, gentle, you can insert your own adjectives here, boat ride. This attraction is a great place to visit when it's very hot outside as this cool air will refresh you. Some adults and older children love the costumes and the music and others find it very boring. The beauty is kids of all ages can enjoy this ride. There's nothing scary about it. No drops, no darkness, no sudden loud noises or surprises.
There are many different dolls to spot as you wind along the waterway. You look for wooden soldiers, can-can dancers, balloonists, chess pieces, Tower of London guards, bagpipers and leprechauns, goose herds, little Dutch children in wooden shoes, Don Quixote and a goat herd, yodelers and gondoliers, dancers from Greece and Thailand, snake charmers, Japanese kite flyers, hippos, giraffes, frogs, hyenas, monkeys, elephants, surfers, dolphins, oh my! There are a total of 289 dolls that sing the familiar song, It's a Small World, in five languages. English, Italian, Japanese, Spanish, and Swedish. Academy Award-winning composers Richard and Robert Sherman, who won two Oscars for their work on Disney's feature film Mary Poppins, were asked by Walt to create a simple yet catchy piece that could be sung in many different languages while guests traveled by boat through the attraction. And it is very catchy. The song was recorded by a church choir in London, a school chorus in Rome, TV performers in Mexico City, and kids from Tokyo and Burbank, California. It was later all spliced together with sounds and styles that represent 25 countries. Today, that achievement with digital technology, honestly, is easy. It's a lot of work, but it's easy. But pre-digital engineering of this feat was what set Walt and his Imagineers apart from the rest. The process of creating endless multi-track loops with multiple languages and ethnic instruments was just an amazing feat. So if you are one of those people who ride the ride and kind of get bored, think about some of the highly complex technology that's going on in the background to make this ride look so simple. Right here in the Africa scene, just to the left of the elephant, you'll see some hidden Mickeys hidden in vines. Richard Sherman was quoted as saying, When Robert and I sat down to write this song, we were given very explicit instructions. A simple song that would convey the message that we have a very small world to live on. We all have the same problems, the same joys, the same sorrows. We share these things. Let's learn how to live together, respect each other, and give each other room to just get along. Those were our instructions. Walt gave them to us directly, so we were very, very moved by those thoughts. Walt Disney Imagineer artist Mary Blair created the conceptual drawings and doll designs for It's a Small World. Disney legend Alice Davis, wife of Mark Davis of the Nine Old Men, was the lead costumer for It's a Small World. Not only did Alice make sure the designs were accurate, but that the materials used to make the costumes were authentic to the specific country. So a lot of you watching this on the internet really can't fathom what life was like before the internet when there was just a telephone and not even a cell phone. The job of collecting all of that information of not only what the materials should be, but then how to get them from an international marketplace, well, it numbs the brain to conceive how really brilliant and resourceful the Imagineers were. Today, the Walt Disney Classic Collection features a series of sculptures representing the various figures in It's a Small World. All four theme parks have a version of Small World, and here's a fun fact, with all of the parks worldwide, the sun never sets on It's a Small World, meaning the tune is always playing in one of the rides around the clock, 24-7, around the globe.
Originally in the finale scene, there was a clown figure in a hot air balloon, and it was the only figure that had a frown in the entire attraction. It was apparently removed during the last renovation of the ride. During crowded times, the boats often back up at the end of the ride and sometimes gently bump each other, so don't stand or allow your children to stand until the cast member beckons you to unload. The original musical concept was for the dolls of the world to sing their various national anthems simultaneously. Robert Sherman referred to this experiment as a small world of horrible cacophony. The song topped some 80 other contenders, including YMCA, Yummy Yummy Yummy, and Who Let the Dogs Out, as the most annoying earworm ever. Now be sure to check the goodbye scene at the end of the ride for a personalized message. IR readers can pick up your name from your magic band and often you'll see a goodbye just for you. Through Disneyland guest research, it was determined that on average, one in every four guests, especially families with small children or those that grew up riding the attraction, consider a ride on It's a Small World a park tradition. But what are your thoughts? Is it an important part of your ride planning or is it a, eh, let's just skip it? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to visit allears.net where you can read other reviews, or better yet, you can rate and review this ride. Hey, if you like this video, click on that thumbs up. Be sure to stay tuned to All Ears TV and allears.net for more Disney news, fun, and stuff. And follow us on Instagram at allearsnet. New to the channel? Check out our other ride videos here. And please subscribe to All Ears Net. Clang that little notification bell so you immediately get notified when we post a new video. This is Chris for All Ears TV. See you next time.